How's it going, everybody? Thank you, Alex, for that introduction. It's great to be here at, at Harvest International. I want to thank all the, the staff of Harvest, Harvest, Harvest International. Let's give them a round of applause, you guys. The whole crew, the pastoral staff, everybody that's here. I want to thank Pastor Ron Brown, who was my pastor for several years. Back when I was growing up in my father's church at Mission Ebenezer, Pastor Ron served on staff at our church. He would preach. He would play the piano. He would lead worship. Um, he would break out in song and dance. He would start speaking in tongues and, and, and bringing down the Holy Ghost fire. Um, and um, he just had such an impact on me and my brothers growing up there. And now the Lord continues to use him in Teen Challenge all over the world. Amen. Let's give Pastor Ron Brown a great big round of applause. I want to thank Pastor Micah. I don't know if he's in the house, um, but he has been such a dear friend and colleague in ministry, doing um, a great job at TCMI in Southgate, California. And yeah, Pastor Micah, Micah Hale. And if there are any students that have ever come through and interned and served at Mission Ebenezer through TCMI, can I, can I hear you guys make some noise? Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. The most amazing um, staff that serves, continues to serve at our church um, every Sunday morning. It's such a joy to see the TCMI staff um, serving alongside us at our church. Um, and uh, to see God doing a work in your lives is amazing. Well, just a, a, a quick update to that bio. Um, it's been a few years. Um, my wife and I, we've been married for 20 years now. Yeah, praise God. And um, she's Nigerian-American. I'm Mexican-American. So in our home, you get a whole lot of screaming. But the doctors say that's good. At least you're communicating. That's right. And, yeah. And the Lord blessed us with two boys, Elisha and Judah. But they're now 16 and 14. And, and, um, and we had Janie come lately. We had a baby girl six years ago, and her name is Lola. Wish I had a picture to show you how beautiful um, Café con Leche looks like. But you'll just have to take my word for it. Amen? Amen. Well, <clears throat> I don't know what the time um, factor is. What time should I wrap up? Anybody know? There we go. There's the clock. I got it. Thank you. We got a whole bunch of wonderful people keeping me on track. Well, when Pastor Ron reached out and invited me to come back once again to spiritual emphasis, I was excited to be here once again with all of you beautiful people, you men and women of God, who the Lord has restored, who the Lord has transformed, and who the Lord has given new life. But I was also kind of bummed that we weren't at the Riverside Castle. The last time we were there, we had a rain and thunderstorm. I don't know if any of you guys remember that. And we were all crammed into the chapel right there at the castle. We weren't able to be under the tent because there was lightning. That was a few years ago. But um, here we are in, two, in 2023, and we're excited about what God continues to do. Over the years, I've had a chance to speak with many students, many graduates, many folks who have gone on and, and, and moved into their internships and then back into life that God has called you into. And one of the things that I continue to hear over and over again was how hard it was for many students in Adult and Teen Challenge to finish what they started. For whatever reason, there was pressures calling them out, family wanting them to be back home, sons and daughters over the phone wanting to be reunited with mommy or daddy. But there's a reason why God called you to Teen Challenge. There's a reason why God brought you to Teen Challenge. 
There's a reason why there was somebody much like the young servant girl in 2 Kings chapter 5 who was the maid servant to Commander Naaman's wife who said, I know a prophet in Israel who is connected to a God. I know a ministry in the United States of America. I know a ministry that is the greatest and most effective answer to drug and addiction rehabilitation and recovery and it's called Teen Challenge. It's called Adult and Teen Challenge. That is directed by Almighty God. That is empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is established upon the blood of Jesus that was shed and poured out for you and I so that we might be reconciled to our Father God, so that we might be reconciled to one another, so that one day we might be reconciled to our husbands and our wives, our boyfriends and our girlfriends, our mothers and our, our, our fathers, our brothers and our sisters, our uncles and our aunties, our communities that raised us, the streets that formed us, and the enemy who thought he had it in for us, shame on him. He didn't know that God had a greater plan for our lives. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. I hear the theme is faith and freedom. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the author, but not only is the is he the author? He's what? Somebody say the finisher. He's the closer. He's the finisher. He, finish, he finishes what he starts. The work that he began in you, he will be faithful to complete it. But you can't just put all the responsibility on him. We have agency as well. Jesus himself was both God and man. And the, the human agency in Jesus also played a great deal of responsibility in allowing him to fulfill everything that God the Father had placed into the hands of his son Jesus Christ to come and do for us. Somebody say agency. agency. Somebody say accountability. Somebody say responsibility. Somebody say sustainability. That's a made up word, but we'll go with it. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram or Syria. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy or he had some kind of skin disease. And by the way, the name Naaman actually means pleasant or it means to be pleasant. And the favor that was upon Naaman was the very thing that saw him conquer many peoples and to give victory into the hands of his king, the king of Syria or the king of Aram. Now bands of Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master, speaking of Naaman, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Samaria was this capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. And the prophet Elisha would call that place his home. Much of his time in ministry. Somebody say Elisha. Elisha. Not Elijah, but Elisha. The prophet of the double portion. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Let me pause right there for a moment. This young girl was basically kidnapped. She was, she was captured, and then she was placed in servitude in the house of Naaman. 
And so she served Naaman's wife. She could have chosen in her heart to be rebellious. She could have chosen in her heart to not want to do anything good when it came to Naaman or his wife. She could have reluctantly been there in service to her masters. Begrudgingly, she could have kept all of the goods and all of the the wonderful secrets and all of the things of God to herself, even to the point of seeing this illness that her servant had, this leprosy, this skin disease, and said, let him rot in hell. She could have said all of those, kind, those things, and in her mind she may have been justified. Have you ever allowed the enemy to take residence in your mind and in your heart? Have we ever allowed the things of the world or the prince of darkness or his demons or his minions to come in, plant seeds of of evil and wicked, not knowing that we were allowing these things to, to, to take up residence in our spirits, in our vessels, when in fact we had already been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, we had already been called by God to serve him and walk in his mercy and in his grace and in his power, yet we were allowing the world to still somehow reside in us. Yet this young girl who was, in, who was uh, brought into forced slavery saw the travail of her master and brought word to her her master's wife, and said, oh, there's a prophet in Israel. In other words, oh, there's a God in Israel. Oh, there is somebody that I know, somebody that I have heard of. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And after Naaman went to the king to tell him what his servant girl had recommended, Look at what the king says in verse 5. By all means go, the king said. I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The Bible says, if you bring gifts, you will make friends fast. You see, at times Israel and Syria would be at war. Other times they would experience peace. But just to make sure that this request would be given and, and allowed, the king of Aram sent gifts with his messengers to make this request so that it would be granted. So that Naaman, this man who was favored by God and, and pleasant to his king, this man who had brought great fame and fortune and victory to his king, might submit his request to the king of Israel to see one of the prophets in his land. The letter that he took to the king read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his, of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. Marshal the troops. Prepare for war. This guy's trying to ask me to do something that I can't do. That's what the king of Syria said. But watch this, verse 8. God always speaks to the man or the woman of God who is listening. God was speaking to the prophet Elisha. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes or rent his garment, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Somebody say amen. Amen. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's How? Somebody say Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Watch this. You're going to love this. He said, he sent a messenger out to Naaman on his chariot. And he said this, go wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times and you'll be cleansed. I don't know about you, but, but 
You know, sometimes we as believers, we as Christians, sometimes folks that have even heard of the, the, the miracles that God does or the miracles that God can do, we have an expectation, we have a vision, we have something in our minds that, that we would like to be a part of our life. We see people prophesied over and we say, oh, I want them to be a part of my story. Or I wish that someone would just lay hands on me and I would be slain in the spirit. Or I wish that God would just heal me and, and God would just, um, just restore me and do it the way he did with that person. Somehow, we seem to discredit. Somehow, we seem to look down upon the very things that God has called us to do and is requiring us to do in order to receive our healing. Oh, I'm not going to team challenge, man. That's, you know, it's for teenagers. Oh, that, that's for young people. Oh, I'm not going to team challenge, man. You know, I'm not really from the streets. Oh, you know, I don't really got a problem like, you know, all those other people from team challenge. You know what I mean? Go dip yourself in the Jordan. Hey, go to team challenge for a year and see God turn your life around. Uh, but, you know, I can go to a shorter program, you know, I can go to an outpatient program, you know, and get what I need, you know, and, and get the tools and put them on the tool belt, you know what I mean? I got all the lingo, man. I've been in and out of court, you know what I'm saying? I know what all the POs say. I know what all the, the judges, you know, I know all the language, you know. I know, I know how to get off, too. But the moment you pulled up in that court, courthouse, you're like, yes, your honor. <laughs> yes, sir. Covering up all my tattoos. You can laugh. Come on, chill out. I'm from the barrio, man. Shoot. And we get up all in there, you know what I mean? And we, we get around the courthouse, you know, after paying our, putting our debit card in there. Man, EBT don't work, man. Forget this. <laughs> Should have called me a goober. I mean an Uber. <laughs> Go dip yourself in the Jordan River, which, by the way, is the ugliest. It was the filthiest. It was the, the most putrid. It was, it was so filthy, this Jordan River, because everything would just make its way down and just get congested and bottled up. And nobody really wanted to go into the Jordan River. They would baptize people there, and people would be like, dang, I thought I was supposed to come out better, man. I stink now. <laughs> yeah, but at least you're healed from the inside out. So look at what Naaman says in verse 11. But Naaman went away angry, and he said, I thought we would surely come out to me. He would come out to me and stand and call on my name. Oh, Commander Naaman, who... Who, who marshals the troops of Syria. I, prophet Elisha, declare and decree. You know all that spiritual mumbo jumbo? Everybody under the sound of my voice. Man, forget all that. Just be yourself. Look what it says. Wave his hand over me over my spot and cure me of my leprosy. I want him to just come and lay hands on me. In the name of Jesus, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with laying hands. Nothing wrong with being the recipient of those who lay hands. Nothing wrong with being supernaturally healed and cured because God can do miracles of all kinds, all types, all shapes, all sizes, in any form, in any way that he so chooses. But when it comes to us, when it comes to you, and the word of God comes to us, and we don't like what the word of God is, we don't like what the process is going to be like, oh, I got to leave my family I got to leave. Well, guess what? You ain't going to have a family unless you go and be obedient. Somebody say obedient. obedient. Oh, but you know, my, you know, who's going to tuck my wife in at night, you know? Well, guess what? You ain't living, you weren't living at home before you left anyway. Where was you? 
Where were we before God had his way in our life? Our hearts distant from God. Our minds in some other place. Desperate. Depressed. At the end of our rope. Broken. Jobless. Toothless. Donkeyless. Give God a hand of praise. Come on, people of God. Come on. Make some noise. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any waters of Israel? Isn't there a better and easier and quicker way to heal me? Why do I got to go and dip myself in the river seven times? Why do I got to go for a year? Then why did God call me to TCM High? Why does God call me to the ministry now? Why can't I just go for six months? It's too long. Why got to dip myself in seven times? You know, seven's a number of completion. It's a number of perfection. It's a number of wholeness. Somebody say Amen. 12 months, it's a, letter of, it's, 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 a, it's a number of wholeness. It's a number of completeness. It's the same number as the disciples. It's the same number as the tribes of, of Israel and Judah, the sons of Jacob. There's a whole lot of good in 12. 12 is a good dozen, and a baker's dozen is 14. Hallelujah. Two for good measure. Give me 14 donuts. <laughs> Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. He was angry when he came to the prophet who was spoken about at the word that he had, that he had received and entrusted in the little girl had gone to his king, his master, made this huge request, brought gold and silver and whatnot, all the way to the doorstep of Elisha. And Elisha sends his messenger out with this prescription of how he's to receive his healing, and then he don't want it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Sometimes we got to stick with the process. Sometimes we got to make sure that we have it in our spirit to start what we finish. My father raised, raised three boys. My father's not a perfect man. Neither is my mother. But they raised three boys. And one of the principles that my father raised the three of us with was, whatever you start, you finish. It's not only biblical, but it's good for you and it's good for me to start what we finish. Oh, no, no, no. I already got the tools that I came for this time. You know, it's my third time around. But, you know, if you piece all the stints that I had together, three plus three plus, it's, I mean, it's, it's nine. But, you know, it'll have to do. How many times do we have to talk ourselves out of God's best and God's goodness and God's miracles before we understand that this has been tested and proven that God's people have continued to call upon the name of Jesus, have ministered the power of the Holy Spirit, and have seen people enter back into this world on fire for Jesus Christ, renewed and sanctified by the blood of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. Said he was angry. He, went, he stormed off in a rage. It's too much. Oh, they don't understand. Yes, they do. Your counselors understand. Your pastors understand. Your directors understand. They went through it. The prophet Elisha, who had been doing all these kinds of miracles, Told him to go and dip himself in the river, the Jordan River, seven times. But Naaman, he knew better than Elisha.
How many of you, how many of you get upset when, when, when you were young and mom and dad told you something and they were right, but you didn't want to admit it? I was eight years old and playing shortstop for my park rec league baseball team and had been on this team with this coach for about four years straight and he had always been good and his son and I were pretty good, pretty good friends and I don't even know what happened. I can't recall exactly. There may have been a moment where I made a mistake. He looked at me from the dugout and it looked like he had red in his eyes, he talked to me as an eight-year-old boy and he said, called my name and yelled it out in front of the whole park. And he says, pull your head out of your A to an eight-year-old. So I went home. I cried. I was embarrassed. I was scared. I told my parents, I don't want to play on that team anymore. They said, why? And I told them what happened. I said, well... Mijo, we finish where we start. I'll talk to him. When the season's over, we could talk about playing on a different team. But you need to finish what you start, Mijo. You guys, I, I've been pastoring 20 years. I'm a pastor's kid. I'm a third-generation pastor. I've seen folks from our, our church come and go, Victory Outreach, Teen Challenge, you name it, so many others. And the ones that are back out doing the same thing, facing the same issues, same old issues, are the ones that always leave prematurely. Stick it out. I may be speaking to even maybe only one person here in this place. But this message is for you and it's worth it. So many things in our minds seem greater than where we're at today and what God's doing in us. Don't let that lie take root. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he obeyed. He went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times. Somebody say seven times. Seven. As the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. His heart was restored. God healed him. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. And the prophet answered, as surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. I wonder why Teen Challenge is free. I wonder why God's healings are free. I wonder why the miracles that God does are free. Yeah, you might have to go and do a few work calls. You might got to go and wash a few cars. You might got to go and, and, and knock on a few doors. You might got to go and, and stand out in front of one of, one of the Albertsons and, and, and God bless the people and, and take some nose and, and some, 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 you know, noses in the air, you know, and, and treat it a certain way. But guess what? Seven times in the Jordan. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. Our church, for our church, it's a joy to support Teen Challenge, to see the work that God does and the miracles that he does. You all play a part in the miracle that God is currently doing right now in your lives 
and in the lives of your families, in the lives of your churches, in the lives of your communities, and in this world. You carry the great responsibility of being image bearers of Jesus Christ, testimonies to the grace of God and the transforming power that he offers. I'm so blessed to be a partner and affiliate with Adult and Teen Challenge. I'm so thankful that I get a chance to continue to be a part of your guys' lives. And I pray that you'll also believe in the work that God's doing in you. That you trust the greater and deeper work that is at work in your life. Because God does have a plan for you. And he knows the steps that you have in your future. You start what you finish. I don't know how many times I've ever thought about quitting different things. And I always remember my father's voice. Thank the Lord he's still alive, but his voice still bounces around in my head for some reason. My brother David just got the offensive coordinator job with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Thirteen years coaching with the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know how many times he wanted to quit football. My dad wouldn't let him. My younger brother Koba, the dean of spiritual life at Azusa Pacific University, Got his doctorate at the age of 35. I don't know how many times he told me, I don't know if I could keep doing all this school, bro. It's a lot. It's too much. Oh, look at you, little bro. God's using you in a mighty and a precious way. I could go on and on with stories and testimonies that would bless all of our hearts. And I could be here. All night. I know you will be. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but the role that we play in the work that God wants to do in us, it's a partnership. And it's obedience. It's God's called us into that great obedience. To not be afraid of the old word, obey. It's hard to obey sometimes, isn't it? We're all rebellious. I'm rebellious, especially to my six-year-old daughter. Because, man, she got a plan for me. Oh, Lola. But praise God. We got to walk in obedience with each other. We got to pick each other up when we're tired. When it's, when it's Saturday, Saturday night, you just finished a work call in the middle of the night, and, and, and your supervisor told you that you're still going to that church to serve in the morning. How you doing? Tired. As my pops would say, we're all tired. Somebody stand to your feet and give God some praise. Somebody make some noise for Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you guys, stay faithful to the grind. Stick with the process. God knows what he's doing. He's been doing it a long time. God bless you guys. I love you.